Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev and in this video I'm going to talk you through a couple of scenarios for how we can change the default sort order in SQL Server or Azure SQL Database. So I guess the first question is why would we need to do that? And the thing with sort order is that to remember is just because you can doesn't mean you should. So if possible, sorting is quite expensive within a database, but there are some scenarios in which we must sort the results. So we're going to talk through a couple of those today. And it's just going to be a very simple examples. And this data is available, the create table and insert scripts are available in the description if you want to follow along with the video. So we're just going to create a table here called account. It's got account ID, which is going to be the primary key for the table. The owner ID, which is an integer value, a date, which is of date time two, a value, which is of decimal data type with a precision of six, meaning it can contain six numeric, individual numeric values and a scale of two. So that means we can have up to two uh, numeric digits to the right of the decimal point, but up to six, six num uh, numeric digits in total. And then we're going to insert some data into the table. And the key here is we're going to insert a couple of null placeholders for the value column. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to do a simple select. Uh, and that's what we're going to play around with to change the order. Let's execute the query and have a look at the results. So at the moment, I don't have any ordering on this table. The first thing we're going to have a look at is how null values are ordered by default. So if I order by the value column, um, and this is going to be ascending by default. Execute the query. I can see that the the null placeholders are actually sorted above any values. So when the data is in ascending order, null, nulls are treated as a lower value than the data. And if we go ahead and reverse that order by adding the desk or you can write out descending keyword. And again, we can see they're treated as the lowest value, so they appear last in the list. Let's go back to our original sort of ascending. So one scenario where we might want to customize our sort order is where we've got null placeholders within the data, and we want those, we want to sort ascending but we want the null placeholders to actually appear last within our query. So a simple way to do that is wrap those null values within the isNull function and simply enter a higher value than exists in our data. So in this case, I'm going to enter 999. Let's have a look at the results of that query. And we can see we've now been able to achieve our goal of having our null placeholders at the end of our query sorted last. However, the problem with this approach is that the value 999 is possible within our data. So that means there are some limitations. If that value was to exist, then we'd again have a t we'd have a tie at that point and we'd have to handle again how they're sorted. So what we ideally want is to have something without outside the limitations of our data type. So if we have a look at that data type with the precision of six and the scale of two, that means within the is null function, I can go up to 9999.99 and it would be okay. But if I was to change that to say 10,000, then we're going to get uh, an error because we're actually converting that to uh, an integer. If I try and execute it with the decimal points, 
we'll still get an error to say that's outside the bounds of our data type constraint. So what we can do to prevent that problem is actually use coalesce. So if I change this to coalesce and execute the query, that actually works. Now the reason we've been capable of going outside of our data type constraint is the difference between is null and coalesce. So is null will always have the limitations of the data type, whereas coalesce will always use the data type precedence list. If you're not familiar with that, that is available on uh, SQL Server Docs or Docs Online. So we can actually enter a simple integer value, and because when we're when we're comparing integers to decimal data types, integers is the data type highest, higher listed in the data type precedence. It means the integer would be chosen over the decimal data type. So in this case, it allows us to go outside the bounds of our data type. Now what's interesting about that is any type of numeric value is always sorted before text. So it doesn't mean that we can simply just change this to ABC and that query would work because here we'd have the problem of, well, the decimal data type is actually higher than the string data type. So that's why we'd get the error here. Now, coalesce is actually, coalesce is actually a shortcut for a case statement. So we could actually achieve the equivalent functionality by ordering by case. So let's have a look at how we would do that. We can say order by case when value is null then two else one so simply here we're just saying within the data if it's null assign two if it's not assign one but then we'd also need to sort by value as well and let's have a look at what those results look like Okay, so we've achieved exactly the same result. If I was to look at the first case statement here, so when value is null, then two, else one, that means we're going to be left with six rows of one and two rows of two. But again, the value is just there to, to break the tiebreaker. Technically, it's not there to break a tiebreaker for seven and eight because they are actually equivalent of each other. Now another scenario where we might want to customise our sort order and potentially where case is more applicable is perhaps we're missing something within the data. So I've got another example here and again this is available in the description. So we're creating a simple product table. Uh, we've got a product ID, category, product and price. Let's have a look at that. So we've got a category here, we've got a product, and we've got a price, just some generic data. But if we want to order by category, that would be absolutely fine. So if we go ahead and have a look at that. So we can order by category. But imagine if that category has um, an, an identity or something that that means something to what we're trying to achieve here, but we don't have it available within the database. So we actually have to assign a customer, a custom sort order based on what we know about the data. So that's where we would be looking to use a case expression. So let's say case category when electronics then one when homeware then two I'll just mark these as strings and 
when clothing then three and when stationary then four and we'll add else five end So we've now been able to sort electronics before homeware, which is before clothing, which is before stationery. So we've been able to fully customize our sort order. And like I say, a typical example of that is because we're potentially missing something of where they want to be sorted. So if we imagine we was doing this within a reporting capability, typically we'd store that within uh, an Excel file, and maybe load that into Power BI alongside our existing data model with the sort order. But this is one of our options is to use a case statement and just assign values. Now, this does have the unfortunate problem that it is hard coded. Um, so if this was ever to change, we'd have to come back in and change this query. Um, but like I say, just because we can sort in the database doesn't mean we always should um, but those are a couple of options of how we can customize our sort order i hope you have enjoyed that video if you have please give me a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos on data engineering business intelligence and data analysis and I look forward to seeing you in the next one thanks very much